So we'll start with the first question. Yeah. Who are we? What are we? Well, this question is a million dollar question. Great. I would uh, Ryan, do you have the suitcase? <laughs> Here we go. I, I, I wouldn't like to take it away from you. You should keep it. <laughs> is there an origin story for the cosmos, for the earth? Can you please tell me which is the beginning point of a tennis ball? <laughs> we must see love is not just an emotion. <laughs> it's our very being. This understanding that our very nature is love is not a new understanding for me. And you express it in a way where I feel the truth of it. And then what happens in me is I, the tears often come as a, as a way to wash away my own disbelief. And then truth come. Well, there is a million things that we could talk about, of course. I wanted to go and try and stick to four basic questions, okay. and they're big questions. So okay. if we only make it to one of them, so be it. Okay. But the questions are, just to give us a map, who are we and what are we? Who and what are we? Where are we? What is the nature of our world, of this reality, of the other realities we can touch? What is it that we really want? And what can we do? So those four questions. Okay. So we'll start with the first question. Yeah. Who are we? What are we? Well, this question is a million dollar question. Great. I would... uh, Ryan, do you have the suitcase? <laughs> Here we go. I, I, I would like to take it away from you. You should keep it. <laughs> you know, who am I is a question that itself is a sign of mature intellect. This question arising in us indicates we are maturing. Mm. Now, no need to be in a hurry to find the answer for it. Ah, yes. Because this very question is like a vehicle for you to go in what? And what I am not gets revealed by asking this question, who am I? Ah. So one who knows the answer will never give you. <laughs> 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 you know why? Because they want you to have this vehicle to go in what? Mm -hmm. This question itself will remove a lot of cobwebs around our mind. Mm -hmm. It'll clear the path for us to f explore who we really are. Yes. And yes. once you find it, then there is no more question. You'll say, wow. Uh -huh. Just a wow will come out of you. No, verb, no other verbal jugglery that we, you know, yeah. Yeah, struggle with. That's not there. Um, it seems that there's two paths that you could take to get there as you go in this inner exploration, which is a, a great virtuous path, as you said. One is to figure out what you are not. Well, I am not that. Isn't that, can you say that like neti neti, like I am not that? I don't know if I'm using the right language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not that. What am I? Well, I'm not that, well, not entirely that, maybe a little bit that, but I'm not that. W what am I in that way? So there's the, the, I am not this way. And then there's the other way, which is, wait, I am that. I am, I am you. I am all of that. Correct. So there's almost two paths that you can take. It's actually, I would say that these two paths are extension of each other. Mm -hmm. So first step is to say from being somebody to being nobody. Mm -hmm. And the second step is being nobody to being everybody. <laughs> you see, I am this, I am this, I am everything. Mm -hmm. But to explore that, the first step we have to take, that is say, I am not my body, not just my body. I am not just my emotions. I am not just my thoughts. You see, but something more than that. See, because these are all changing. Mm -hmm. See, our body has changed so much. If you take a picture of 10 years back, you would see so much change. Mm -hmm. and, and 10 years later, we will all look different, right? So there is some things that are changing and there is something that is not changing in us mm -hmm. because of which we are able to even identify the changes. <sighs> so everything is changing totally. Then you can't even uh, have a reference point. You can't even notice the change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So there's something that is not changing. What is that something? That's where the whole secret lies. Mm-hmm. What is true is always true is an expression that I got from another teacher, mm. uh, Paul Selig. What is true is always true. And so what we're trying to find is what that part of us, which is true and always true. And that's the, that's the quest because an, another way to look at it is you can say, I am Aubrey, but really that Aubrey is a, that would mean I was static. Really what we should say is I am Aubrey Ing. You are Guru Dev Ing as you evolve into the Guru Dev process of evolution, as I evolve into the Aubrey process of evolution. So that isn't entirely true because it's changing, but what, it, what we are is, is a process, an, an evolution of self. See, I, I'll can, I can give you another uh, example. See, it's the same Mississippi River, very old river, from millions of years the river is flowing. Mm-hmm. But every moment the water is new in it. It's not old water. So it's both. Mm-hmm. It's an ancient river, but yet it is very new water, new river. Mm-hmm. For some time, for people, sometimes it's very confusing. How can something be both old and new? <laughs> yes. You see? Yes. So sun is very old, but the uh, warmth that you are getting today, the sun rays today is very new. You can't have uh, a stale sun rays. You can't bathe in a stale sun. Mm. So, this is ever new and yet very ancient. Mm -hmm. Similarly, there is something in us which is not changing at all. And there is many things in us that keeps changing. The two aspects in us, one that doesn't change, the Aubrey that doesn't change, and there is another Aubrey keeps changing every moment. Mm -hmm. Your ideas change, your emotions change, you know. Ancient people have said it in another beautiful manner that they said that there are two birds sitting on a tree one is enjoying the fruit, the other is just witnessing it. <laughs> so those two yes. birds are inside you. Yeah. Now, there's an idea that I've been very fond of thinking, which is includes all of this that we're talking, but also makes the space for us having a unique soul. So yes, we are nobody and everybody but we're also uniquely ourself, our own name in an evolutionary process that extends through this life and perhaps into other lives. And we may have similar or different ideas of reincarnation, but we are like a strand connected to the divine, which is everything and nothing. So we're a strand that connects there, but that strand is unique. And we have the unique opportunity to express the divine in our own uniqueness. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. That's it. (laughs) Everything is unique here. Mm -hmm. Not just Aubrey, not just, uh, you know, me, not just someone else. Even every flower that blooms here is very unique. Yeah. You see? It's like our fingerprints. It's very unique, see? No one can open your iPad. So uniqueness is there, yet there is something that is the same in all. Yeah. Common. Yeah. In the world today, there's energy ideas that try to reduce people. And actually, we do it in our own mind as well. We reduce people to a function, almost like in a prison system. People don't have a name, they have a number. And it seems like there's an energy in the world that wants to control everybody by giving them a number, reducing them to a function. And to me, that feels like a a violation of our unique spiritual actualization, gifts, potential, who we really are, to try and reduce us to something that is like a a machine when we're not. We're an emanation of the divine. (laughs) You know, Aubrey, what I say, some people may try this, but it will never happen. (laughs) (laughs) It cannot succeed. Yeah. Because nature has made us so unique. And, uh, you know, any individual trying to change that or make us into a machine may appear to work for some time, but not in the long run. Right. I don't believe that they will succeed in doing so. (laughs) 
I love not only that you said that, but I love how you said that because your confidence means a lot. It's because what I feel from you is just a confidence in, in the God that is expressed through us and a, this smile like, yes, try to defeat God. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck in your efforts to defeat God. <laughs> you know, I often say God only should have make it obvious that he's in control. <laughs> <laughs> so let's move. Let's move to the second question. The second question is, okay, we understand a little bit. And of course, this is a long inquiry to understand who we are, what we are, and a beautiful inquiry we should all take. Now, but where are we? What is this world filled with other people, filled with other beings, filled with where did it come from? Is there an origin story? Is What is the story that we can tell I'm about where we are? I'm happy you are holding on to this question. You know, as a three-year-old boy, you must have asked this question. What is this? Yeah. Where do the clouds go? You know, every child comes up with the spirit of inquiry. Mm. What is all this? And this is the mother of scientific innovation. Mm-hmm. You see, what is this is science, who am I is spirituality. <laughs> and they both go together. Mm-hmm. Knowing about oneself and knowing about the world around us, they're complementary. Unfortunately, people have misunderstood this whole thing. They think either one of them you, you get into, you know. Right. We need to know about this world. That is the whole path of scientific discovery. Mm-hmm. How many stars are there? How many planets mm-hmm. are there? You know, ancient civilization, they did do this. You know, they had this spirit of inquiry. Mm-hmm. And thousands of years ago, they already predicted Jupiter has 12 moons <laughs> without any um, Hubble telescopes, you see. How did they do that? Yeah, uh, that is through intuitive awareness. Uh-huh. Go within and get the knowledge. Uh-huh. Which is actually something that science science now says that you can't do. But what you're saying is there's a broader awareness of scientific inquiry in which you can actually go inside yes, yes, to find yes. the truth. Now science has started to recognize in the cognitive aspects of the brain, mm. of our mind, you know. Other than the five senses, we can even cognize many things that is beyond the five senses. Yeah. And I'm, it's, we are in such a beautiful, fortunate era where science is uh, shaking hands with the ancient science of wisdom. I hope they stop shaking hands and hug and kiss each other and make love <laughs> because we need more. We need more <laughs> union it's, between It's a them. beginning, yeah. <laughs> it's a beginning. First to shake hands. First to shake hands. <laughs> uh, is, They're not that bold enough to hug yeah. still. <laughs> a little bit hesitation is there, but... We have come a long way. I'm uh-huh. talking about, you know, 40 years back when I used to talk about meditation, spirituality, yoga. People thought it it's not for common man. It's not for mainstream. It was somebody out there must be doing all these things. But today, I tell you, 2.5 billion people around the world are practicing meditation, yoga. Wow. That's a big number. Big Almost number. One, one third of the world's population. Mm-hmm. Progress. Is there an origin story for the cosmos, for the earth that I think, I know there's a lot of mythology in the Hindu tradition and there's a lot of stories. And I think stories are perhaps the best way to understand things. You don't make the stories necessarily literal, but the stories point to the truth about what, how this cosmos came about. Do you have, are there stories like that that Oh, yeah, there are yeah. plenty of stories on that. But whenever people ask me an origin of something, I only ask one thing. Can you please tell me which is the beginning point of a tennis ball? <laughs> uh, then no. I'll answer that question. <laughs> That's my condition. I always put that. Uh-huh. Tell me what is the beginning point of a circle? <sighs> I would say, if I had to answer that, if I was taking your inquiry seriously, I would say that it begins with an idea in the imagination of a consciousness. See, a circle, every point is a beginning and every point is an end. Uh-huh. 
So virtually there is no beginning, there is no end. Mm-hmm. You can't say tennis ball begins here and it ends there. Right. This is spherical thinking. You know, we are used to thinking here linearly. So we want everything to begin somewhere, end somewhere. Mm-hmm. But there is another way of thinking, this spherical thinking. Mm-hmm. The Oriental philosophy always uh, looked into this. Mm-hmm. They said beginningless and endless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's all spherical. See, you look at the universe, it's all spherical. Mm-hmm. So you don't need to look for when it began. <laughs> you know, if you right. go to Hawaii and you see there a coconut tree there, and say, so where did the first coconut or <laughs> came about? You know, the middle of nowhere and you have coconut trees there. Did it come from Kerala? Did it come from Indonesia? Or from California? You know, you can go on this uh, these hypothesis which may not be true, see? Mm-hmm. Why not the nature put everything simultaneously in all the places? Mm. It's possibility. Mm-hmm. So this spherical thinking is something we need to look. Mm. Another example I'll, I'll, I would like to give. So you keep a beaker of water and you put a pen there. The pen appears to have bent. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So when this, when did this optical illusion began? When you observed it. If you don't observe, still it is there. <laughs> right. So, it is not something which has begun. An illusion is not something which had a beginning. Mm-hmm. It is an appearance. Yeah. yeah. Appearance don't have a birth. This is what I'm saying. I do. And it... it it breaks the way that we think about everything because we've thought about everything in our life linearly. Linear. <laughs> and you're inviting us into a mystical perspective in which we say, this is what is. Yeah. And this question of start and end is just the way that our brain is used to thinking about Very, things. But here is, here is an invitation to look at things differently and just say, ah, this is what is. Today, fortunately, the quantum physics, the quantum scientists have uh, physicists have recognized this fact. You know, there is what is called spherical thinking that energy is there as energy. You don't need to say the energy originated from here because it has neither beginning nor end. It can neither be created nor be destroyed. Mm. Mm-hmm. It is just there. Mm-hmm. Because I love stories. And because I love myths and mythology, and I love understanding the true meaning behind it, is there a particular myth or a story from your culture that illustrates something interesting or something that you enjoy sharing, uh, just personally, about about the cosmos? Just any story that comes to mind. Oh, there is plenty of them. Plenty of them. And so many stories. I don't know which one I should just take it like that. Okay. Uh, the the Lord Vishnu, the creator, the maintainer of the universe, he is resting. And uh, from the wax of his ears came two demons. And uh, he was fighting with them for thousands of years, like he couldn't win over them. Then he uh, asked for help from the Mother Divine. Kali? Mother Divine. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, and she came and she finished these two demons and relieved him from that war. And um, the, the victory came to him. Mm. This is a story. Now, the wax, the two demons, you should know this name of them. They are Madhu and Kaitab. That means uh, craving and aversion. <laughs> so your craving and aversion starts from your hearing and if you keep fighting with them you can never win over <laughs> but what can win over is a higher power when more energy comes into you and the awakening the power of awakening comes within you then cravings just drop aversions just drop out of you the two demons were uh, slain inside the water now, water means love. Water means love. Love. 
So only with love you can transcend both craving and aversion. Mm. So within the water, these two demons were destroyed. Mm. But they couldn't be destroyed in the air. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't destroy them in the mind. You had to destroy them in the heart. In the heart. What was the role of the what was the role of the mother divine in that myth? Mother divine is the energy, wisdom, knowledge. Uh -huh. And so when knowledge uh, came up, then the craving and aversion both with love. Yeah. Inside love they could be dissolved. Yeah. That's a great story. There's so much wisdom in so many stories, but if we don't stay patiently and, and understand them and understand that water means love and understand what this is, we won't get the real meaning behind them. Correct. See, apaha is a word that in Sanskrit that connotes both water and love. So if some dear friend you call apta. Apta means my dear friend. Mm. So apaha means water. <laughs> yeah. So in a friendly manner uh, or in the space of love, you can get over your cravings, your aversions, and your hatred, and all that negative feelings that you keep fighting with. Uh -huh. So it, this whole story here uh, indicates don't fight with yourself, but just elevate yourself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? Bring more love Bring into, more love. into your life. Yeah. When we're talking about cravings and aversions, this goes to my next question, which is an exploration of what is it that we really want? Because we'll chase our thrills, our riches, our pleasures, and we'll avoid our pains, our discomforts, and we'll chase validations. But it's not what we really want. If I go into a deeper inquiry, like, what do I really want? So when you're you know, questioned with that inquiry about what people, what it is that people really want, what do we really want? Well, see, you're asking a very general question. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, it depends on what stage of uh, evolution you are in. Uh -huh. If you ask a child what you want, you said, I want a candy. <laughs> I want chocolate. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. the one then. And you ask a teenager, what do you want? Oh, I want a friend, boyfriend or girlfriend. Whatever, you know. And you ask someone, little older, then I want a job. See, our wants, our chase for something goes on till you really realize, uh, you really come to this understanding. I'm much bigger than all these roles I'm playing. Mm. Then you start asking, who am I? What is the purpose of my life? Where am I going? Is this the world? Is just, this is it? Is there anything more? And once you get to that stage, I tell you, rest becomes very easy. Your mm. seeking begins. The seeking begins, then it's not too far away to find yourself. That's a beautiful, it's a beautiful way to look at it. And also there's another inquiry that I want to dig a little deeper in because the child may think that it wants chocolate, but what it wants more, what he or she wants more is love for sure. Because if you deny a child love, even as much chocolate as you give it, it will not be a happy child. Yeah, It yeah. will not be satisfied. No, this love is the basic thing. Yeah. And love always takes pride in the old. See, our mind runs for something new. Mm. Our heart yearns for something old. Mm. You take pride in an old friend. <laughs> And you take pride in a new computer. <laughs> it's not the other way around, you see. Uh -huh. You don't say, I have an old computer and I have a new friend. <laughs> <laughs> That's not anybody's uh, yeah, it's true. wanting that. So nature of love is uh, to look for the old, that bonding. And I tell you, it is always there. And most of the conflict in the world today is between the mind and heart. Mm -hmm. While the mind wants latest thing, gadget, something new, something new, the heart always longs for uh, to be connected. As you said, see, you had the beautiful mandala here. This interest in humanity is that of the heart. Mm -hmm. And 
in life you need both science and spirituality yeah and love is always there but it is more than seeking i would say in giving you will find it more it's the, almost the same it's fit. my understanding of love is the moment you give it it opens your heart to love and the receiving is automatic as you give you receive because an open heart is a bilateral gate love this is what more, many people don't understand they right. keep craving for others attention and love but i tell them they say look you start giving there is a joy in getting no doubt but there is a greater joy in giving mm-hmm. the joy that we get in getting is an infant joy <laughs> but the joy in giving is a grandfather's joy <laughs> grandmother's joy mm-hmm. and that that really indicates love yeah yeah and demand destroys love if we demand love then we are destroying love mm. you know in my i have a incredible relationship with my wife vailana she's over there watching and one thing that we've recognized is if we get into a disagreement or a conflict which is very rare you know we have a, a really beautiful relationship where that doesn't happen often but the the resolution is if either one of us and both of us can find anything to love even if it's our cats if one of our cats come over when we're having a disagreement and we love the cat then our heart opens back up and then it's easy to love each other again <laughs> it's like the moment we open to love specifically we can open to love universally which includes returning love back to our own field yeah, yeah, yeah. i would go one step ahead and say you know arguments and fights are part of love <laughs> <laughs> it should be considered as part of love yeah Do you know like you have sometimes you put tabasco in your <laughs> it's a little spice it's a little spicy and that makes life more interesting yeah <laughs> it makes life more interesting you can't only drink tabasco like you drink water <laughs> yeah, but a course. little bit yeah. yeah a little bit of it is good and if there is a disagreement between two person i would say you take turns don't <laughs> do it on the same day it <laughs> <laughs> in the husband or if one give turn for one to flare up and you keep down <laughs> and next day you can take your turn <laughs> yeah for sure so we must see love is not just an emotion mm-hmm. it's our very being mm-hmm. when it is our very nature you can never get rid of it mm-hmm. so that i see that not one being on the planet is there without love mm-hmm. only that gets shrouded uh, it gets covered mm-hmm. it's covered by stress and misunderstanding and small mindedness lack of vision all these things comes as a barrier so even in the worst criminal you will see that there is a child hiding inside that person waiting to be unveiled is uh this understanding that our very nature is love is not a new understanding for me it's something that many teachers have taught and that i believe mm. but when i hear something and and you express it in a way where i feel the truth of it and then what happens in me is i the tears often come as a as a way to wash away my own disbelief in all the ways that i actually even though i thought i believed it i didn't really believe it and then truth comes and it's like I have to wash away this lens of perception that has been perceiving the world differently and uh no 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 it's a sign of love yeah when heart opens tears flow <laughs> yeah and doubts disappear mm-hmm. the ancient uh, rishis of india have said when you um, when when you encounter the truth you know the doubts disappear Mm. and the heart opens tears flow these are all part of the process yeah there is no dirt to wash it away <laughs> you are already pure <laughs> <laughs> yes indeed yes indeed 
the 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 fourth question is and then we'll explore some different other areas but understanding all of this understanding all of this the world is in an interesting time right now what can we do to help the world right now i wish this question comes up in every mind at least half the population when they get this what can we do we will will be out of the selfish shell that we uh, reel in and not and be sen- insensitive to others around us you know what can we do this question must arise as i said the first question should arise who am i mm-hmm. this is very important this is uh, the very beginning of our community life what we can do to make life better how we can save the planet you know mm-hmm. how we can contribute to the growth of spiritual awareness awakening people in people around us these questions may have many many answers mm. i would say the first is we have to envision think of a violence free and stress free society if i look back and see 40 years back what was america and what it is today it is appalling so mm. many people are committing suicide mm mm-hmm. This year, four hundred medical professional doctors have committed suicide, and every day, twenty-seven veterans are committing suicide. I mean, this was never heard of before. Mm-hmm. People who are supposed to save others' life are taking away their own life. Mm-hmm. Means there is a serious need for spiritual upliftment, mm-hmm. our wisdom, knowledge. You know, when our prana, the chi energy, shrinks. that is when we want to get out of the body mm. like you if your jacket if this jacket is too tight what is your natural tendency take it off i want to take it off so when our subtle body a subtle mind shrinks our energy shrinks then you feel depressed and it shrinks more you feel suicidal mm-hmm. now what to do to make it come to its normal position breathing exercise yes yes see when you do breathing exercise what happens your energy expands and you might have noticed whenever you are happy what is the sensation you get not that of shrinking expansion yeah expansion something in you is expanding hmm right and can you keep it expanded i tell you yes you can hmm meditation and breathing so the sudarshan kriya is such a powerful technique breathing technique that we teach the sky technique it helps one to expand one's energy mm. and then this tendency to uh, commit harm to oneself or to others disappear yeah you know today what is happening is there is so much of aggression in the society you saw just 3 uh, days back some a gentleman comes in a grocery store and shoots down 10 people and we don't want to leave such a world to a coming generation nor do we want to live in such a world sure where we live with such insecurity you know you feel so insecure to send the kids to the school yeah feel so insecure to go to grocery store you feel insecure to walk in the streets this is not the world that we should live behind right. we all must focus in creating a violence free world for that we need to create a stress free world at least we should know how to get rid of stress when it comes on to you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. see today stress is a common thing it stress is competing with god it's become omnipresent <laughs> you see everywhere yeah yeah so uh, we have to cut it to the size you know yet we, we can't have the population go in uh, such depression we can't keep we can't continue on this continue path continue like this the i mentioned that i you know i study with uh, quechua teachers from peru and one of my teachers maestro orlando in the quechua tradition he says the number one condition he is helping people with is stress 
we have not educated our population how to handle the mind. Yeah. We have not educated. We have taught them dental hygiene, but not mental hygiene. <laughs> how to keep your mind free from inhibition. How to keep uh, keep your spirit high. We have not learned about it. No techniques were taught. Sermons were given. Oh, love thy neighbor, help everybody. And we have done so much sermons from all traditions we have heard. Nothing concrete, practical for people to do. <laughs> right. And that's how people really learn. Yeah. You do it. Yeah. Yeah. This is what is needed, you know. Education in mental health. Or even mental health itself is a sort of taboo. I would say education in well-being. Mm -hmm. To learn about the seven layers of our existence. About our body, a little bit about our body, our breath, our mind. Our intellect, our memory, our ego, and something that transcends our ego, the self. A little bit knowledge about all these seven layers of our existence can just make our life so much better. So mm -hmm. much better, I tell you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You come from a culture that has had this wisdom for thousands of years. In America, for example, we were founded by Protestants and very strictly religious, you know, who wanted to escape England and, and form their own religion. And so we don't have a, a rich tradition or history in the, in the self-exploration of the mind. We were told to believe everything that somebody else wrote 2,000 years ago, or in that case, 1,600 years ago or whatever. But in your culture, this wisdom has been around. And in many other cultures, the wisdom has been there and in the Native American traditions. But what is it what is it that is that is still maybe so attractive about the new ideas of culture that have people forgetting you, you, the old ideas? You see, the though things have been in different cultures, it's not necessary that people have adopted it or paid attention to it. You see? See, I see every part of this planet has its own uniqueness. Mm-hmm. And nature has bestowed science. You know, so much scientific discovery has come up in America, like nowhere else. Mm -hmm. And it has benefited the whole world. Mm -hmm. Similarly, ancient wisdom has always uh, come from the East. Mm -hmm. And that can benefit the whole world. Yoga's origin was no doubt in India. But till recently, not everybody was doing yoga, you know. Mm -hmm. Though its origins were there, it was in books. Hardly people were doing. <laughs> Only in recent times, the people have recognized and realized it's important to do that. Yeah. So, otherwise you take it for granted. You know, you have something at home, you just say, okay, yeah, my grandfather did it and that's okay. You know, I don't <laughs> need to do that. <laughs> that type of mindset comes. Yeah. I have a question here. See, when you can accept food from every part of the world, you accept technology from every part of the world. Doesn't matter where uh, technology for cars have done. If it's a car from Japan, we accept it. If it's from Germany, we take it, right? Mm -hmm. Similarly, Danish cookies. World <laughs> Delicious. And Swiss chocolates. Delicious. People love it. Yes. You see, when you can accept uh, food from everywhere, music from everywhere, Beethoven is from Germany, but the whole world enjoys Beethoven's uh, mm -hmm. music. Sitar is from India. Pandit Ravi Shankar, mind same name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the sitar is uh, popular everywhere in the world. Yeah. So, why not we accept wisdom also? Why do we shy from wisdom? Right. See, just, just by eating Danish cookies, you will not become um, Scandinavian. <laughs> You'll continue to be American. Mm -hmm. In the same way, whatever faith, religion you follow, doesn't matter. But you can benefit from all the wisdom in the world and own it, I say. I say. Mm. Don't think that, oh, Buddha was from India and Buddhism is only for India. No. Mm. Wisdom is universal. Jesus was from Jerusalem. That doesn't mean it's only for Jerusalem. You know, right. from for Israel, the whole world has accepted uh, his teaching. Similarly, 
Lord Krishna was from India, no doubt, but the Bhagavad Gita. Einstein has recognized Gita as one of the life-changing texts that he he read. That you know, mm-hmm. for Einstein, Gita was a very uh, big turning point in his life. Mm-hmm. Uh, Steve Jobs has benefited from the Vedanta philosophy. So, the world over, people, wise people, they always own all the wisdom. Yeah. They don't see it, it is my culture or someone else's culture. It's all ours. We have one planet Earth and all the diversity, cultures, all belong to us. Yeah. This ownership can make us a global citizen. Mm-hmm. I cannot agree with you more. I think it's so important to be able to share, as you said, not just food or music or clothes or technology, but to share the wisdom and the medicine. And people will actually get angry, though, is the problem is they'll get angry if you're experiencing a culture's medicine that's not your own. For example, I, I really appreciate dance and the ecstatic expression of dance, the ability to dance to music, to drums, and feel that. Well, that's in many different cultures. But so, and so in a, in a certain gathering, we painted our own bodies and faces however we wanted to. Inspiration from the elements yeah. didn't copy anybody. We painted our faces and we danced. And people were saying, you can't do that. You're an American. You can't paint your face and dance. And I said, what do you mean? This is a human right. It's a human right yeah, because... to paint your body and dance to the drums and pray to the elements. Like if we make that only for this culture or that culture, then we're lost because the world needs all of the medicine of the whole world Correct. and all of the practices of the whole world. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. We must own the whole planet. Mm. And honor all of the cultures and have yeah. reverence from whence they came yeah. and gratitude. Yeah. You know, gratitude is is actually the key aspect. Like, thank you yes. for holding this tradition. Thank you for showing us the way. Absolutely. You, know? you don't need to do everything yourself, but it's it's necessary to have that sense of uh, belongingness and uh, gratitude, as you said, mm-hmm. honoring each other, respecting each other, mm-hmm. respecting traditions. That's necessary. Yeah. Peace is something that you are creating a movement to stand for peace. And understanding a bit of it, it's about creating peace within yourself, a field of peace within the self. See, after two years of pandemic on top of this war and then all this uh, inflation, there is a sense of uh, despondency in people. as feel so hopeless. You know, when you feel so hopeless, you start going down the hill. You know, you feel more depressed, more depressed. I wanted to stir people's energy up and then make them realize, yeah, we can do something. If we put all our intention in one line, I stand for peace. Mm. Of course, we all stand for peace, we all know. But when we invoke that uh, conviction from within us, we will we can get over our sense of hopelessness, our helplessness. Mm. So, and collective intention from so many of us will definitely have an impact on the world consciousness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's the reason I am now touring US, mm-hmm. <laughs> going from city to city, and having everyone sit down and stand up for peace. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down and sit down and go within and <laughs> meditate and then you stand up for peace. Yeah. Yeah. Stand for something that's important. Another interesting question that I have is there are many gods and goddesses represented in Indian culture. When you connect with one of those gods or goddesses, it seems like there's it's it's more of an it's an energy it's an energy that's represented by a form correct and so if if somebody wants to go and interact with that energy of shiva or kali or vishnu or krishna or 
what is what is the way that you recommend that people try to connect with that energy to feel what it is you know um like the white light has all different colors right so you choose to pick one color red yellow blue green orange whatever and violet but they all ultimately reach only the mm-hmm. one light mm-hmm. so that's what in in india it's a ekam sat vipra only one truth one divinity but man- manifested in many forms mm-hmm. so it's same wheat you make pasta out of it you make samosa out of it you make bread <laughs> out of it yeah. you make bagel you make a muffin out I'm of it i'm getting hungry with all of your analogies <laughs> of food is it is it lunch time <laughs> <laughs> so like that you know in the varieties so in one any one form of uh, divinity you take these are devas you take and then you see all the other devas are also part of that mm-hmm. you take devi and shiva is part of devi vishnu ganpa everybody uh, every other divine are associated with that one mm. so it is your choice that's why it's called ishta deva ishta deva you are choice choice of uh, worship mm. so if you like shiva find that shiva ishta your your liking mm-hmm. you know and form of shiva also you can choose you want to you like dance then you see the dancing shiva mm-hmm. you want to see the meditating shiva then there is meditating shiva <laughs> so similarly if you are a um, lover of mother divine then she has many forms mm-hmm. very gentle form in the form of music and the the goddess of music you know she sits on a stone or white lotus is this saraswati saraswati and she has three things one is a rosary and a book and an instrument veena so that is sound music book logic and then meditation the rosary <laughs> these three things together make saraswati <laughs> so like the dinner is both symbolic also energy level both the best way is chanting listening to those chanting and sitting and meditating mm. and different chantings have those specific definite vibrations i tell you mm-hmm. yeah and it changes your changes your consciousness yeah it, it brings a different flavor in your consciousness uh uh-huh. Yeah. like you go to an ice cream parlor and there is all different flavors you know strawberry and this and that mm-hmm. like that they are all different flavors in the consciousness right and we're almost finished here and you if you talk one more time about food I'm just going to walk out and go to lunch <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the idea <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're steering us gently towards towards lunch here absolutely all right, so you, I'll, you I'll got let, it you're right <laughs> so I'll let this be the final question is there's something of a paradox that I believe has been taught which is atman is brahman brahman is atman the godhead within is the same as the godhead without and that's sometimes difficult to understand how that could be possible how is my god that's within me the same as this whole world universe god to listen palti are you breathing you have air inside of you do you see this is my air can you hold on to it <laughs> yeah the air which you have you are ex- excelling that air goes all around the world my dear mm. you can't div- the subtle you go you can't create division you mm. can create division in the body or oh, that body is here this body is here but you go little subtler in the breath level can you say this is my air i'm just <laughs> going to hold on to myself <laughs> no the air that gets into your lung goes all over the world the sun that is there is shared by everybody though same sun comes into your window 100% right when you see a sun ray coming into your window mm-hmm. it's not just half or one part of it you find the whole sun mm-hmm. the total sun is in every ray mm-hmm. in the same way 
the air around us you can't divide you go settler the space you cannot say this is my space hmm. you move from this room to next room the space has changed hmm. and yet it is not changed hmm. so atman is the individual impressions the air in a balloon is the same air that is outside the balloon mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah with the balloon <laughs> and the air yeah and so you must see um, beyond the the cover of the balloon mm. and if you identify more with the air inside you say yeah it is the same air outside and inside mm-hmm. it's the same space which is inside the pot and outside the pot mm-hmm. so it, it all comes to that oneness atoms whether it is an atom from wood or brick or a metal or water or our body it's all same you know here physics help will help in uh, understanding vedanta very well hmm. yeah yeah it says the table is not the chair and chair is not the door on one level they are all different but on another level it's all wood mm. so in that sense it is one and it's all light ultimately as well another way to look at it huh. well this conversation has been sp- spectacular not just for the words but for the energy you know thank you for holding the wisdom and the embodiment of that wisdom it's a very special thing and i feel very honored to have had this conversation and to be able to share it. So, welcome, thank you for my heart. Welcome, nice. Yeah, nice, thank let's you. go have some lunch. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thank you.